and welcome to a closer look with Mark Miller and Mark Shine. And Mark Shine, we are uh, headed down the home stretch here a little bit. Tournament, girls are a weekend, boys get kicked off this weekend. This thing's winding down. We'll be in Columbus before you know it. We have people who their favorite time of the year is Christmas or Easter or summer. This month right here is my yeah. favorite time of the year. That's right, basketball yes, junkies. Sir. This is it, especially for high school basketball. Hey, we've got a lot of bright spots as we get down uh, the last couple uh, week or so of games. Yes. you got a three you want to look at. Well, we just look got? first of all, congratulations to Logan Spire up at Arlington, went over the 1,000-point club. Uh, we've kind of been looking at 1,000-point players as they score throughout the course of the year and get there, and Logan Spire got there this week. He'll be an all-league player, of course. Congratulations to him. And now i got another one. Now, Mark, we don't have a lot of time, you know, as, as we move through some of Logan's highlights there, to look at ladies basketball. You know, our, our show's 15 minutes long. We don't have enough time to really do ladies basketball correctly. But I saw two things this week in the ladies tournament game I wanted to highlight. And the first one is from New Knoxville, Ashlyn Miller. She wears number 10. And if you look at her, you're going, she's got a pirate thing on. What is she doing with the headband? Well, here's the story behind that. Ashlyn got head-to-head uh, -head with a player in Lincoln View in their sectional semifinal game. Underneath that headband is a gigantic bandage and one, one person told me she had eight stitches, another said no, she had 11. She's got that thing all stitched up underneath there. She played hard and she played well. And, you know, my family, we talked with the grandkids, are you hurt or are you injured? Yeah. Well, there's somebody who's injured and difference. she competed anyway. And congratulations yeah. to Ashley Miller. That's pretty cool. Girls can be tough too, right? They can be tough yeah. too. Some of the guys are taking a message yeah, from that right, right there. That's but congratulations right. to Ashley. And then I want to look at Natalie Rethman. Same game, Natalie's from Marion Local. Here's what happens. Her team has blown an 11-point lead. Actually, they're down to, they've blown a 9-point lead in the last two minutes of the game. She makes that shot right here, and it's a game winner. And look at her teammates. But here's the real key to this as we go back and look at it again and slow it down a little bit. She goes the length of the floor and scores. Watch her reaction. Does she jump up and down? Does she celebrate? The game's over? Nope, she's guarding somebody. None of this, I'm going to run down the floor, make it hard for my teammates to high-five me. None of this, you know, I'm going to flex and do all the stuff we got to do right now to show off how cool I am. She makes the play, jumps right into defense. That's been coaching. That's parental help right there. That's self-discipline by a young lady. And I really appreciate what Natalie Ruffman did right there. I wish a lot of people would take a cue oh, from boy. her on that. It's about all about that? team and not about self, and, and she proved it right there. And, and you know she's been coached, and she knows she's been worked with on how to handle The game was over. The yeah. clock had gone. Yeah. The lights are on, and she's out she's playing defense playing. anyway. Congratulations. Right. Good job picking those out, Mark. Yep. Well, last week we showed you the girls' league champions, and this week Mark developed the list of the boys' champions. So we're going to put those up there. and. Uh, some familiar names, Mark. Yeah, they are. Liberty Benton, of course, we've followed them all year long. And we did the overtime game that they won over uh, Van Buren to kind of put them on top there. Uh, we've seen a lot of these teams there. Pandora Gilbo, we're going to talk about a little bit later on. But we've kind of followed these teams. We had a hunch they would win, although the GMC ended up in a three-way tie. Yeah. But uh, we the only one, followed them. The only one that didn't have a, a solo champion. And that track, uh, that one loss was a local. To Lima, Lima Senior. Lima, Lima Senior, Senior defeated Toledo St. John's yeah. and the second place team, Toledo St. Francis. But St. John's, that loss came very early yeah. to them, and now they're on a roll. And congratulations to Perry. I think this is three in a row for yeah. them. Spencerville, after graduating, all those guys, they won it. And, of course, Ottawa Glendorf with a very young basketball team as well. Just goes to show you got to pretty much run the table. It and does. And why some teams have played 12 and 14 league games and the others only seven because they play the double round round yeah. and play each team twice. Or in the case of the BBC, you got 12 teams in the league and you got to go through with that. So there, there you go. go. All right. Hey, where are they now? We talked a lot about a lot of guys yep. that we've worked with here, some we ran off here, uh, some of the – former coaches. How about a former broadcaster, the guy that kind of set the stage and, and kind of mentored Mark and I as we became basketball broadcasters here on WTLW, and that's Mike Shep, our good buddy, uh, retired and not doing games anymore, but still very active in the area. Of course, Mike uh, retired as an English teacher at Wapakoneta High School and started doing radio and TV broadcasting way back when with WDOH Radio in Delphus. Worked with Time Warner when they were trying to figure out if they wanted to do high school basketball and then meshed with WTLW right about the same time they decided that was going to be an outreach, especially to the young folks in this area. And for so over 25 years, yep. did broadcasting of ho local high school sports. Yep. His wife, Mary Lou, retired from Bath High School, yep. was one of your co-workers, an art teacher, teacher yep. over there. Two daughters, Mary Beth is a interior, interior decorator. decorator. <laughs> yeah. 
I knew you'd get me. At, uh, in, around the Washington, Washington D.C. area. Yep. And of yep. course, Kelly, she lives in Atlanta slash Kansas City slash anywhere her husband, Mike Person, goes because he's an NFL offensive lineman. And they have Mike's pride and joy. Yes, sir. The two grandkids. Let me get it right now. A grandson named Sean and a granddaughter named Nora, born just before the holidays, I think. Yeah. In, in, in fact, uh, kind of an odd situation because Mike is a Falcon, gets cut goes to Kansas City and signs with them, and Kelly is in Atlanta mm -hmm. because she doesn't want to leave the baby doctor and all that, and Mike has a game on a Thursday night and flew back home on Friday in time for the birth of the baby. All right. It's pretty cool. Well, that's our buddy Mike Shep. He wrote a book uh, when he finished, and it's uh, very interesting oh, for yeah. us because we can remember a lot of those games, but if you haven't read that and you like local high school sports, pick up that book that Mike Shep wrote. Uh, it's a good one. And Mike, thanks for all your help and setting us up and uh, allowing well, us to continue to have fun. I, I wore an old throwback shirt today That's from, right. from the Mike Shep days. Right. And the other thing is, every time I work with Mike being an English teacher, I try to come up with a big word. Yeah. You know, I wonder how he would like ambicorner dextrous. Ah, you know, he, the guys he, that can shoot out of either corner like that I made up, he probably wouldn't like that. I, I, no. That wouldn't go very well. No. All right. Thanks, Mike. Hey, rule of the week. All right, here we Official go. Official shine. Yeah, well, this came out. We're going to do this very quickly. We thought we were done with rules of the week, and then I had a, a fan, a lady, ask me about it. Hey, how do you officials know where to take the ball out of bounds at? So I thought we would go just a very quick look at that. Um, obviously, there are some rules involved with that, and that means, for example, if you have a, uh, a technical foul, you take the ball out at midcourt. Um, if you have an over and back, which we did several weeks ago, wherever the offending team touches the ball, that's where you take it out of bounds at. But in normal situations, we'll put a picture up on a, the screen here and take a look at it. In normal situations, Ben drew this oh, with a nice. stylus. Very I don't know nice. what a stylus is, but he drew with this. Anyway, if you think about where we're at here, you, know, you look at it, there's a free throw line across, and then from the elbows to each corner, if any foul, any violation occurs between those arrows, that yellow line and the basket is taken out of bounds on the baseline. Anywhere outside of that, it's taken out of bounds on the sideline. You can see the line down the middle of the floor, obviously, if a foul occurs or a violation occurs. Um, on the top of our screen, it goes to that sideline out of bounds. If it takes some, some place on the bottom of our screen, it's taken out of bounds on the bottom side. But that's the basic rule of thumb. Inside that uh, trapez trapezoid, I should talk to math Ooh. teachers. Inside the trapezoid there, it's taken out of bounds on the baseline. All right. There we Good go. job. Hey, as always, we have some great plays of the week. And this week, it was all one game and mostly one player. It really was. And i got to learn how to punch all my buttons here. We're going to start with this, first of all. This is Anthony Master Lasco. And... You know, Mark, I, I like to watch teams. I, I'll go watch a team. I'll go watch a game because I know it's going to be a great game. It's very rarely I say, I want to go see a player. Yeah. I, I, would, I want to go see Anthony Mashalasco play. Well, here he is, first of all. He's right in here. And watch the move he makes on the inbounds play. A catch, a ball fake, he goes baseline, and a two-handed dunk. And at the other end, as we get down here, this is going to, here he is making this move right here. He goes baseline puts a crossover move on, and then goes underneath the basket and scores through a third player. Crossover right there, pass one, pass one, and a reverse layup. And then if we look at this, this is against Lipsick, and uh, here we can back it up just a shade if we can. Well, let's go through it again. Here's that last move, and see if I can get it stopped in the proper point here. He is double teamed right here as Lipsick is pressing late in the game. Watch the catch he makes. Stumbles, catches, gathers himself, and then left-handed fl flushes it. He's player of the year, of course, in the BVC. Yeah. That came out this week, and he is one of my favorite players. He's a guy that I would pay money to go and watch play basketball. He's a special player. We saw he him throw in 46 earlier in the year, and he, had, he hasn't slowed down since. No, he had since. 38 in this game, which ended up being a championship <laughs> game there with, uh, with the Lipstick Vikings. So. All right, tournament games coming up. Yep. We're going to highlight a few of them for you. I get to go first. All right, Liberty Benton and Van Buren. Well, I, I guess I ought to pre preface it by saying you posed this question to I me. I did. What game are you looking forward to seeing, or what game would you like to see, assuming right. they win a couple in the early rounds? Right. The game I picked, that team right there that we just looked at with Anthony Master Lasco, Liberty Benton against Van Buren. And the reason is, Mark and I on January 6th did those games, uh, that game when it was a league game in the BVC, and it was an overtime game that Liberty Benton won 63-58. If they meet again, it would be March 9th in the district semis at Napoleon. I don't have to tell you about Liberty Benton. You just saw the human highlight film right there. But for Van Buren, things have changed a little bit since that game. And it was a good game. It was, it was a, great a great game. game. Got away in overtime a little bit. Braxton Fasoni, 
Their big guy in the middle, he was in foul trouble the whole game, did not play very much. We can assume he may not be in foul trouble this time. He might play a little better and give Liberty Benton a little bit more trouble. One thing we know will be different, that night Riley Adolph was on, uh, on the bench in street clothes. Now he's playing, recovered from an injury. He's a six foot four outside shooter. He is also going to be different than the first time they met. I think this game could be even better. They're going to win a couple to get there. Yeah. But if so, that's a game I really want to that, watch. That's the game we need to lobby with Ben upstairs to put us on. Yeah. We, we can yeah. go do that one. I've got one that I want to see also. And again, we're talking about games where teams have to win a couple games to get there. I want to see Perry match up with Minster. And here's why. We have followed Perry all year long. They're 19-3, 7-0 in conference play. They will play the winner of Ridgemont and Harden Northern, two fellow NWCC teams. And, of course, they will, Perry will be heavily favored in that game. We've gone through their stats all year long. Jacoby Lane Harvey, player of the year in their conference, averages 16-plus. Orion Monford, who is much, much, much better than I realize. He is really can play. He's where Amber, De Amber Corner Dexterous came from the <laughs> other night. And Plummy Gardner, Kobe Glover, we know how good they have been all year long. We'll, let's look at Minster on the other side. We know Aaron Ernst can just flat out shoot the ball. He's 18 and a half points and better over the last part of the season. But here's what I, I really want to look at. They will play, by the way, they have to get past Temple or the Knoxville winner. That's no easy challenge mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. But here's the situation I, as I view this particular game. Minster has played 14 games decided by seven points or less. Now, there's seven and seven in those games. But they played four overtimes. They're one and three in overtime games. You say, well, but they played a lot of close games. Perry has a loss by three. They have a loss by seven. Every other game has been 10 points or more. I want to see, first of all, if Minster can compete with them. And if they do, what happens when Perry, who hasn't really been challenged much this year and not at all since the Christmas break when they played WBL schools, how will Perry respond when they get pushed to the limit? And remember, everybody's got Perry penciled into the regionals, yeah. and you've got that around your neck and going, oh, we're seniors, and where are we at? I want to see that basketball game. That'd be a good one. Yes. Another question Mark Shine right. posed. Name a team that has a chance to get to the regionals or even further. I picked Versailles. Really went out on a branch. Yeah, that, that's a, <laughs> on a limb there. So did I. But. <laughs> but, you know, right now they're playing. Their next game is against the number 20 seed. They were in the number one seed. They go south into the Dayton area. And then they play number nine seed in the semis. If they get by them, then they would have to play either North College Hill or Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy in the Dayton District Final. Neither of those teams will be easy to beat. So I'm not saying it's a cakewalk, but Versailles is the odds-on favorite. So not much of a risky bet thinking yeah. Versailles might get to the regionals, but they got to play some good ball yet. I think the MAC team came out today. Justin Arms was player of the year, and his brother A.J. was also first team. So they've got, wow. they've got some guys down wow. here. Well, the one I chose, and again, here we go, we're going out on a limb. I chose <laughs> Ottawa Glandorf, and, and I think they have a little bit of a challenge in here to look at. First of all, they're in the Ohio Northern District. They are the number one seed. Um, they're going to play the winner of Bryan and Salina. They've beaten both of those teams already this year. Then they're looking at other WBL schools, Elida Van Wert and St. Mary's. They've struggled, not necessarily struggled, but they've won those games, but not by huge margins. I think they're favored there. That puts them in the district finals quite possibly with either Upper Sandusky or Wapak. They've defeated Wapak, admittedly, at OG. And Upper Sandusky, of course, they have West Vent, Jevin Dibel. Uh, they are two offensive machines. It's a team again, that has scored over 70 points 11 times this year. Upper Sandusky's low game offensively on the season is 57. And, and I, but I think when you look at what happens, their schedule perhaps not as difficult as the one that OG has played. We could go through all the list of the OG names we've seen all year long. I think OG makes it to the regionals. Okay. And then one team that can pull off an upset or maybe even two. And I'm going to pick Kenton. They start off with Shawnee. They lost to them by 10 when they played in, in the regular season, January 27. But they're playing better now. They got the Phillips guys. Yep. They got good size. Shawnee's kind of been up and down based on how McDonald plays offensively. They've had some injuries. They'd have some sickness. If they could get by Shawnee, then they would probably play Upper Sandusky, the team you just talked about. Yep. We question their level of competition all year long. We wonder if their point guard will be out throughout the tournament. It right. looks like he will be. Right. That's a huge chunk of their offense off the floor. What if they upset them? Then they most likely would play Wapak. Well, they played Wapak to an overtime game January 6th and lost by three. They might pull off an upset, get on a roll, and get all the way out of the top bracket of that district and end up playing OG. Playing OG. Wouldn't that know. be interesting? That would be See, interesting. See OG and Kenton. Yeah. That would be great, and it would be great for Kenton basketball. It would. I, I changed the question a little bit. my own question. I changed it a little bit. 
what I did is a team that might surprise us, and I chose Pandora Gilboa. And the reason is, even though they're 16-6 and six and they won the PCL, a lot of people just didn't think much about them. They are very defensive-oriented with, with Coach Bradick. Um, you know, they, they uh, uh, will play Ottoville. They've already beaten Ottoville. They've got Continental Lipsick coming up. Lipsick, of course, is a good match. Continental's had a good year. I just think with what they're doing, Joe Bradick, their defense that gives up 43 points a game on the season. Drew Johnson, who's averaging 19.4 points a game. Cooper McCullough, who's a flat-out three-ball shooter. Um, I just think that Pandora Gilboa is going to win some tournament games and kind of flying under the radar will get into the districts and play a little bit better there. Coach Brady's been to a tournament game or two. He's he? been to a few, and he knows yes, what he he's has. doing out there. All right, let's put up the broadcast schedule for you. The tournament now. Look at these. All over the place. Starting tonight, Coach Shine will be at the Elida Fieldhouse. We'll be all over the place. Down south and uh, to all the districts, a lot of games. Tune in. Should be a lot of fun. Catch the guys' games, the girls' games, and we'll see who can get back to Columbus. We thank you for joining us on A Closer Look. We'll see you next time.